So I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Albert Jin to you this morning. He is part of the Division of Neurology here at Kingston and Queen's University, has been with the e-consult service since late 2016, so has lots of years of experience to share in terms of his work on all things e-consult. Uh, and we welcome the opportunity to learn from you this morning, Dr. Jin. So over to you. Great. Uh, thanks, Danielle. Thanks for the, uh, the opportunity to speak this morning. I'm just going to get set up to share my screen. Um, let's see. Oh, um, looks like I can't share my screen. It's been disabled. So uh, I'm not sure how to get the presentation up. So team, do we have Dr. Jin's presentation? Please try now. Okay. Okay. Um, Excellent. Yeah, great. So uh, I have no uh, disclosures to make. I have no financial interests and no conflicts of interest. Uh, and these are our objectives today. We'll go over just really, uh, I guess, the, my experience particularly with neurology e-consults and maybe some of the things uh, about that service that might be able to uh, benefit your patients and yourself. So within the whole sort of e-consult landscape, uh, neurology accounts for about 6% of all e-consults. That's based on information from the last six months of 2021. Uh, and that's probably the case uh, throughout the year as well. Uh, over the past year, uh, we've received 212 e-consult requests. Uh, the majority of those are going to neurology. Uh, and then, as you can see, there's a scattering of other uh, subspecialties within neurology that receive e-consults as well, uh, including epilepsy, headache, movement disorders, stroke, and multiple sclerosis. Uh, these are the, this is the, the bullpen of uh, specialists that are involved here. Uh, just let me just, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is a, a wide array of specialists that we have within our division covering all of the specialties, which I just mentioned. Most of us also do general neurology as well. And uh, for your own practice, you might find e-consults helpful if you have, you know, for example, one of these five points um, that you're thinking about uh, with your patient. Um, so if the exam's normal uh, and you get a whole bunch of imaging reports or lab reports back and the history just doesn't make any sense, that's a perfect setup for an e-consult. So that's something that you can, you can send to us and we usually turn that around within less than a week. Um, if your patient has an abnormal neurological exam, uh, but nothing really threatening, you know, nothing really like urgent, uh, but you're just not really sure how to make sense of it, you're not sure which test to do next, it's re totally reasonable to ask us through e-consult where, where we should go next, and usually we can give you some insight as to the diagnosis as well. Um, if you're not sure whether the person needs to be seen, um, then you can send it as an e-consult first, and then if we feel we, we need to see it, then we'll... we'll give you that feedback and then we'll, we'll, you know, you can send in a referral for an in-person consult. The wait list for that tends to be a fairly long. Uh, so it's about nine months right now. Um, if, uh, if a diagnosis has been suggested from an imaging report and uh, you aren't sure what to do with that, then of course uh, that would be a perfect reason to send us an e-consult. We are often able to get a hold of the radiologists who've made that report uh, and to discuss with them as well. Uh, and lastly, this is particularly for movement disorders. Things which can be shown on video tend to be very helpful, uh, tend to be very good for e consult So things like essential tremor or undifferentiated tremor, um, uh, patient video um, is often very, very helpful for that. And often we can solve the problem without having to you know, send the person in for an in-person referral. Um, so. Uh, these are some of the examples of e-consult requests that I received uh, recently. So these are just three that I received over the past, uh, I think, four or five months or so. Um, so, for example, do I need to do investigations for what seems to be an acephalgic migraine in a 70-year-old who's never had uh, migraines before? Um, that's the sort of thing which we can usually answer fairly quickly right off the bat. We don't actually need to see that person. An enormous number of general neurology consults are of that nature, the, you know, the headache question or the query migraine question. Um, and it's, it's often something that rather than wait a year for a response, we could turn around a response often within less than a week. Um, 
uh, another example, what test should I do for a 49 year old with an incidental finding of multiple chronic cerebellar infarcts? He seemed a little young for this. Um, and for something like that, uh, you know, the stroke in a young person workup, there, there's sort of a, a standard sort of approach to that. Uh, and that's something that we're quite often able to share uh, and is fairly straightforward to do. Um, we do see those people in the stroke clinic, um, although a lot of those people probably don't even need to go to the stroke clinic if, they're, if they don't have any symptoms. This is something which can be solely done through tests, uh, and we can certainly guide that through e-consult. So um, e-consult is useful in the sense that, uh, you know, when, when there's, it's, it's a good way to do sort of um, asynchronous uh, communication um, rather than just doing it through email. Uh, e-consult is very useful because you can keep track very easily of what's uh, what the previous sort of discussion was before. And lastly, uh, just I put it in red because uh, I'll give you an example of my response uh, to this question. Um, so new diagnosis of polycystic kidney disease in a 20 year old, should I screen for aneurysms? And if so, what imaging test should I do? Um, so these sorts of questions where it's really just filling a gap in knowledge, they're very straightforward for e-consult to do and, and they, they save a lot of time. This is an example of my response um, that, that I gave. I'm not saying that this is the sort of response you would get from everybody. Some people might do a lot more, some people who might do a, a little bit less, but this is sort of what I did. Um, so I recommended doing an MRA. I recommended the frequency at which you do the MRA and what to do with the result if, it's, uh, if there's an aneurysm or no aneurysm. Um, I, I took the, a few minutes to fill out an MRI rec uh, because that's sort of a, a, an important step and, and trying to get the information right on that is, is useful. Um, that's something where, you know, a few minutes on the specialist times can save <laughs> literally months of the patient's time if you, if you fill it out right. Um, and just forwarded that to the, uh, to the, uh, the physician uh, who put in the e-consult request. Um, and also gave a reference for, um, for future reference for the screening strategy used for that sort of situation. Um, and yeah, the response I got from that was, was positive. It was just, you know, a very polite thank you. And, um, and then they just carry on. Uh, and I haven't heard back from them since. So hopefully that was useful. Um, E-consult in our division overlaps with a, a number of other pathways that we have. So the first one I'll put up there is the Parkinson's disease pathway for primary care. There's the link for it, and uh, you can actually just get to it off of, uh, off of the web, just uh, on Google, just KHSC uh, Neurology, and you'll come up with the web link for um, the neurology page. And on that page is referral information and referral links. And one of them is for this uh, primary care management pathway for Parkinson's. Um, that's uh, it's a reasonably well received document. Uh, actually, the Movement Disorder Clinic is using it quite regularly, as I'm sure many of you know now. Um, and so that's something that uh, e-consult and that, that pathway they they can sort of go hand in hand with that. Uh, stroke referral also we we have a fairly fast turnaround time for most uh, stroke referrals, um, but some patients perhaps don't even need to be seen in clinic. And, uh, and so that's the sort of thing where you can actually send an e-consult in first. Um, and it certainly expedites our, our sort of assessment of the person in clinic. So uh, there's a link for that as well. Okay, um, so does this change anything? Well, the biggest thing it does is for these simple questions, uh, you get a pretty fast uh, turnaround time on feedback, usually less than a week, often just a couple of days. Uh, and that's compared to several months for in-person general neurology, uh, non-urgent referral. Um, we do have now uh, two people doing general neurology referral. The problem with the in-person assessment for general neurology is it depends on who's doing it um, or how many, specifically how many people are doing it. So if we have two or three people handling general neurology consults, uh, our wait list goes down. Uh, and it's now sort of bottomed out at about nine months, which is still, you know, I would argue far too long. Um, but if we lose people, so we recently lost one of the people who were doing general neurology referrals, uh, they, they've moved on, um, you know, your wait time may fluctuate. So uh, this is at least consistent and you can generally get some sort of feedback very quickly. Um, uh, most of the time, uh, the information received is uh, from us, uh, from the specialists, has been helpful according to the feedback that we received. Um, so for 2021, the last six months, um, uh, yeah, so for the ones that I did anyways, I'll just show you what I have here, you know, about three quarters of the time, people thought that the advice was good. 
uh, and there was a new uh, course of action which they took based on that. Uh, and about a quarter of the time, I was just, I, I simply reconfirmed uh, or confirmed what uh, the primary care provider was, was thinking. So um, this is a sort of the effect of e-consult on the referral uh, itself. So um, most of the time, uh, whether it's, uh, whether it's, I just put up my own stats there. My numbers are relatively small compared to neurology or Ontario, of course, but, uh, you know, could say about half of the time, uh, a referral was contemplated, but could be avoided. Uh, and so that's important because then you spare a lot of time for the, the patients and waiting to be seen. Um, about a quarter of the time, uh, it sort of confirms what the physician, uh, sending it was thinking is that this person needs to be seen in person. Uh, and usually when um, this is picked up on, on the e-consult radar, so to speak, um, quite often uh, arrangements can be made to see the patient a little bit sooner if necessary. Or if there is a wait time, at least you have some reassurance that, you know, it's reasonable, like the, the person's not in any imminent danger. Um, and then you, as you can see the rest here, uh, sometimes we just confirm that the refer, uh, an in-person referral is not needed. Uh, and occasionally there's a, a few people who found that there were, was no benefit to, to um, e-consult. But that's the, that's the minority. So for all of Ontario, that's like 1%. Okay, so, uh, so to summarize, e-consult in neurology is well supported uh, by several local specialists and we can provide quite quick advice, quite quick turnaround on advice. Uh, it is effective for cutting down on the need to refer. Uh, half of the e-consults that are sent uh, wind up not having to be uh, referred on. Um, and in the vast majority of cases, uh, we are providing, I think, useful advice that either confirms or adds to the initial uh, clinical thinking on the patient. So uh, that's it. Um, well, I hope you find that uh, e-consult will be helpful for your cases, and we're, um, we're always around to, to um, handle any e-consult request. That's it. Great. So maybe we'll stop sharing the presentation, open the screen up for questions. So great opportunity to ask Dr. Jin some questions. So maybe uh, uh, the team, Stephanie, can monitor the chat for me. Uh, and I'll start off by asking a couple of questions. Sure. So um, you talked about the 49% of, I guess, avoidance that you have with patients that get an e-consult that's sent to you. Can you talk to us about the value in preparing patients for a visit that might be needed? So we do know from your, your stats that patients do still need to be seen in some instances. Is there still value in sending an e-consult to help prep that patient for their visit? Yes, uh, sometimes if the case is complicated uh, or it's, it's just hard to make sense of it on paper, um, having the information sent to us ahead of time it can be quite helpful. So things such as lab reports, imaging, um, even any clinical notes that the, that the primary care provider has, um, it takes time to review those. And, uh, and so having that ahead of time um, can certainly quicken uh, the visit. Uh, and so in, in that time, uh, you can get a bit of a higher yield in terms of the diagnostic thinking. Um, the other thing too, is it also allows us to do better triage. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to keep in mind that when referrals come into general neurology, there's a lot of referrals that come in every week and the person doing triage um, might not have time to read, you know, the 30 pages that have been sent with that. And so what they'll do is they'll usually look at the initial paragraph of the reason for the referral and triage based on that. Um, you know, when you're receiving like 60 to 100 referrals a week, yeah, you can't expect someone to read a 30 page document um, to, to triage every referral. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, an e-consult, at least you get the attention of a specialist who's sort of focused on that. The average time that people are spending is about 20 minutes um, just to review the information. So that is very helpful in terms of determining the priority uh, and also prepping for the, the in-person visit if it's required. Right. And what kind of attachments are useful to include with an e-consult when, when, when something is coming your way? Right. So imaging reports are very useful. Laboratory reports are very useful. Um, uh, previous assessments by other specialists, if, you know, if this is the third neurologist that's seeing this person, other assessments are useful. It's sort of the usual things that would be sent with a normal referral. They're right. very useful. Um, the advantage with e-consult is you can also send photographs and video. So pictures and video uh, can make an enormous difference in a lot of cases, especially in movement disorder, video makes an enormous difference. So mm -hmm. um, that is, is quite uh, handy 
uh, when we're right. viewing these e-consults. Yeah. So I see in the chat that we've got some information about attaching and what the requirements are for attaching that kind of information when you're sending an e-consult. Are the things that you like to see in terms of the quality of the video or the photos that you're getting or challenges that you've seen through your experience? Um, I Generally, video quality these days is quite good. Um, okay. And so it's very high quality video is easily accessible to anyone with a cell phone, basically. So. Um, that hasn't been an issue, and the quality of um, uh, still photos is uh, is quite good as well. So we haven't, I haven't personally seen any um, problem with the quality of the the video or photograph. Um, the issue sometimes comes in whether you're uh, filming the right thing. So uh, there are for movement disorders on the website. There's instructions on what to video uh, and what to photograph. Um, so that that's very helpful. Um, but frankly, almost anything is better than nothing. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether you're doing it right, whether you have the right angle and so forth. Um, if, if it's something which isn't covered on the website, um, I would say anything is actually useful if, they're, if, if video or action uh, on the patient's part is um, uh, critical to understanding their history. Excellent. And when you're responding to an e-consult, are you typically tending, tending to send back the text response that you shared with us on the screen, or do you occasionally send attachments as well? It's um, I, I usually, for me personally, I uh, do usually what you saw on the screen, and mm -hmm. that's usually the, the entirety of my response, um, plus usually an attachment for a reference or a paper or something like that. Um, Sometimes some e-referrals are the response is much much more brief. Uh, it really doesn't require a long explanation, nor does it require any sort of attached references. Um, but in other cases, sometimes if the reference is going to be helpful uh, for the physician to just enable them to uh, handle future similar situations on their own, yeah, I'll include an attachment, and, and many of us do. Some people send you know much longer reports. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's really up to the specialist. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. And I know when a primary care provider receives your, receives your feedback, that they're asked to provide a response in terms of the helpfulness of uh, the e-consult to you. What do you do with that feedback? How do you find it being helpful for you as the, the responder? Um, most of the feedback that I've re received uh, has been, um, very positive. Actually, I've never received a negative comment. Um, not everyone responds directly yeah. to us. So I, I would say that happens about maybe one time out of five. Um, the rest of the time, I'm sure people are responding in another, another way, uh, but it's in a way which I usually don't see. So uh, for me, the response has been um, just sort of reconfirmed that what I'm doing is okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there something that you'd like to see in the response from the primary care provider that would be helpful for you? Um, if there's any um, uh, feedback, uh, the, the only thing I would say is, I mean, if I'm doing something wrong, I think they should feel comfortable telling me. Um, if there's other lingering questions about the patient, occasionally that's about like one out of 10, maybe one out of 15, where there's a follow-up question. Um, that's always welcome. Um, it's very easy for us to handle that most of the time. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly, you know, any sort of follow-up um, information on the patient yeah that'd be we'd be welcome to we'd be happy to review that at any time if, if needed right. yeah. so i'm just going to pause for a minute in case there are other questions on the call please feel free to use the chat as well if you've got a question otherwise i have more like things that i could be asking fascinating um so as it relates to neurology you showed us at the beginning of your slide presentation that there are several neurologists responding to e-consult yep. Uh, and I think there's an opportunity to direct your inquiry to the stroke service for neurology or the headache or movement disorders. So you don't just have to go to the general e-consult inbox, I'll say, for neurology. Right. Yeah, that's right. So um, you can redirect to specific um, groups. So there's a headache group, there's a movement disorder group, there's a stroke group and so forth. Um, sometimes if you're not sure what category the patient falls under in terms of a subspecialty group, um, the specialists, uh, the e-consult specialists will often um, sort of help sort that out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do that all the time. Um, occasionally, I'll receive an e-consult, which is, I feel is beyond what I can handle. Uh, and so then I'll usually respond with that, you know, that this is not, a, uh, this is not something that's really, you know, it's kind of beyond my scope. 
uh, and I'll usually suggest a few people who might um, be able to handle it, uh, you know, better than me. Um, but yeah, you can you can always have these redirected, or you can always have, don't have to always send it to general neurology. Although a lot of the e consults we we get, they're totally reasonable for for general neurology. Okay. General neurology can handle basic things, right? In in stroke, MS, um, epilepsy, all of those things. So there's overlap between all of those the, those specialties in general neurology. Um, but it is good to have a specialist, like for example, in multiple sclerosis. Um, who's well versed in treatment and uh, complications um, to to be available, um, you know, within less than a week. Right. So if someone's not sure of where they should go with their inquiry, using the general neurology. That's totally reasonable. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of what happens now with the faxed referrals that we receive. Right. Mm. So a lot of those wind up in general neurology, even though there's a, a sort of a, an epilepsy angle to it or a movement disorder angle to it. Right. We're all, all of the specialists that you see, uh, frankly, they're all capable of handling general neurology. They're all, I mean, they're all still neurologists. So they can at least do some of the basic things um, to sort stuff out, or at least they can access the information that's needed to, to move things forward. Um, so it's totally reasonable if you're not absolutely certain which subspecialty to refer to, to, to send it to general neurology. Okay. Yeah. So in your presentation, you talked about questions that would work very well through e-consult yeah. where you didn't need to see the patients in person. Are there things that are just not appropriate for e-consult? They may be time sensitive in nature or yeah. the so condition? Obviously, if someone is, is declining rapidly or deteriorating rapidly, that's someone who should be seen in person. Frankly, that's someone who uh, we have our general neurology service on call 24 hours a day, um, every day. So if you have a real concern uh, with someone in your office, you can always just call us, um, we're on call. And so you might get a resident initially taking the story, but they'll have to review it with our, our, one of our attending staff mm -hmm. and you'll at least get a response basically immediately. Um, otherwise, if it's someone who uh, needs to be seen in person in a clinic setting, uh, you can always send in a referral. Uh, it's often helpful to discuss first with someone on call and then send in the referral and saying that you discussed with so-and-so. Um, and that usually gets triaged quite quickly uh, if it needs to be seen quickly. Um, other things which are probably not appropriate for e-consult are ones where there's a, an array of abnormal findings which are causing disability. Basically, the bottom line is if you have someone who is having a serious limitation in their quality, of, in their life, um, in their functioning in life, it's probably better to actually, in neurology anyways, to see that person uh, in clinic. Um, and that's something which, you know, generally is going to require uh, more than just a fax referral. It's probably something where you can, um, there's a number of ways to, to sort of do the sort of the preempt uh, uh, or sort of the, the I guess the, the sort of prelude to seeing them in person. Um, you can use e-consult for that purpose, saying like, look, I'm gonna send this person to you guys, but here's what I have, uh, mm. and here's what I'm thinking, and what do you think? And usually that gets people's attention very quickly. You can call us, uh, and that's also where, as I said, we're available 24 seven. Um, and if you do send in a fax referral uh, and you don't have time to do the phone call or to do the e-consult, um, then it just has to be very, very clear, really within the first paragraph that this person really, you feel this person really needs to be seen in person. Right. Um, yeah. So those are the things where probably e-consult doesn't necessarily, you know, avoid the referral. Interesting. Yeah. So you talked about also the ability for, um, I would say an ongoing dialogue with an e-consult. So someone oh. might have sent you a question, you respond, then yeah. there might be a follow-up. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about how that works. Yeah, so people, uh, when we respond to an e-consult request, we send in our, our response. Um, and then if there is feedback from the physician, we, we get alerted to that and we just mm. look at that and we respond to that. Um, for my examples, uh, the feedback has been generally, thank you very much, um, that was helpful, or um, thanks very much. And by the way, there's this other issue with this patient, is this related to the first issue? Um, so that's, that's sort of what I have been receiving. Um, occasionally I'll get a feedback very rarely where someone says, you know, I did this MRI scan and this is what this shows. Am I okay to like do other things or should I just sort of leave it uh, as is? Um, and that's the sort of feedback that we get. Um, it's, it's useful because if you think about the time you wait to see some, to, for someone to be seen in person, that mm -hmm. can be several months. 
uh, and then the time for the testing, which eConsult doesn't really affect, uh, other than to perhaps um, uh, change the priority for the test that's requested. Uh, and then getting that person, uh, responding to that person again and feel follow up um, when the test is done can sometimes take another few months. So mm -hmm. you could be lo losing a year uh, with that. Whereas with this, the time that you lose is really just the time waiting for the test and the feedback um, is, is, you know, very short within less than a week. So you can save several months uh, with that sort of communication. Yeah. Great. And when you're going through that stack of referrals, I know you guys get in every day. Um, what's your sense on those refer the volume of referrals that you're seeing coming in that could be avoided through eConsult? Yeah, I, I don't know how. Um, my my view of it is about half. Really? So yeah, it's about. I mean, that's that's just my view of it. Other people feel differently, perhaps, but the minimum, at least in our division, when we've talked about it, the minimum is about thirty percent. Hmm. Uh, some people uh, really feel they need to see, like they just don't feel comfortable uh, handling things through e-consult. Um, but even for those people, they they acknowledge that about 30% of all referrals we receive um, don't need to be seen. They can be handled through e-consult. Right. The majority of us feel it's about half. Um, so it's it's the, for our division, it's about half of what we receive could probably at least be initially handled by e-consult. Right. Um, and there would be no delay. Even the ones that can't be handled by e-consult, if we get an e-consult, we can do a better job of triaging them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they just go into the pile. Uh, and the pile is now nine months long. Right. Uh, yeah, right. so at least with the information from an e-consult, we can at least do a better job of triaging. If this person really needs to be seen quickly, we'll know. Um, because you're going to get a physician's attention for you know, 15 to 20 minutes to read a referral. We don't spend more than probably a minute uh, reviewing um, a fax referral that comes right. in, unless there's something that really catches our eye. But mm -hmm. most of the time, it's going to be about 60 seconds. Right. So time well invested sending those e-consults. Yeah, it's, it's, it saves a lot of time, potentially. It could save months. Like the, mm -hmm. the time that you spend putting together the e-consult, it's a pain. Everyone knows that. Um, but it could save the patient several months. So, so it's worthwhile, right. I think. Yeah, yeah. excellent. All right, well, thank you very much again for joining us today and telling us about your experience. So we do get, you know, as you say, 200 plus e-consults a year for neurology, and you've got a great team that are helping respond to those inquiries. We really appreciate your uh, sharing your wisdom with us today. Oh, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so last up in the series for our e-consult webinars will be Dr. Khaled Khan talking to us on June 10th about child and adolescent psychiatry. So hope we're a, you're able to join us for our last in this series. Thanks everyone, good, uh, happy and a healthy day to you. Take care.